Hi guys, welcome to the fourth episode of Score Couch, where we talk about software development, backend development, frontend development, user experience, you know, cybersecurity, all of that stuff related to digital. Uh, today with me uh, is Wojciech. Hello. Uh, our backend developer and you know, team leader, tech leader. And uh, we will be talking about backend development today. So the stuff that I have no clue about. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's really important for, uh, I think, most of the digital uh, projects out there. Uh, so Wojciech, maybe we can start, you know, by you telling us a little more about who you are, what do you do, what's yeah, your experience? Sure. Uh, as Olaf mentioned, I, I'm a backend developer, team leader here at SCORE. Uh, I'm responsible not only for coding itself, but also for designing architecture of whole incoming projects. So based on a uh, research phase of each project, I'm able to properly design the whole structure of that uh, new project. Okay, you've been a backend developer for how long? Uh, eight years, I believe, nine, maybe. Okay. And what's your tech stack or, or yeah, preference? Mostly PHP uh, with Symfony framework, uh, but also front end a little bit. So I'm more like a full stack developer. I okay. work with React uh, on the front end side, back end, as I mentioned, PHP, uh, Elasticsearch, AWS, uh, AWS services. Uh, yeah. Any uh, part of the history that you can share with us? Why PHP? How have you started with software development? Why, so why software development, not uh, you know testing software or anything else? Yeah, how I did that happen? Knew from very beginning what I should do in my life. Okay, I graduated uh, high school with IT specialization, mostly web applications, and okay. yeah, I had good teachers with uh, for. Uh, coding classes and yeah that become my passion so 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 it was actually before you even went to the university yes okay so that's that's I interesting my university faculty based on my previous experience so I, I know I didn't even know that there were high schools like that in Poland yes that you can actually graduate from high school and no think about coding I thought that this is this is impossible actually it's possible there's a lot of schools uh, in Krakow also uh, which has, you know, specialties in, in coding, in graphic designers, for graphic designers and, yeah, for system administrations, for okay. all of, you know, uh, areas in, in IT. Okay, you've mentioned uh, architecture. Uh, okay, what is architecture of uh, a project? And okay, how to is it simplify uh, this thing is a fundamental structure for all for all project uh, with all elements, dependencies between them, uh, connections among them. Uh, so everything what is on the you know, bottom of it, how it should be built, uh, what should be done there, uh, what connections between different you know, services and everything. So okay. this is architecture. What I like to think that it's similar to, you know, to building architecture. So we need to know how to approach, you know, each project to build it in a correct way. So the first wind won't blow yes. it off the ground. Yes, yes. <laughs> or we will not lose something or let's say that I would like to expand my home house, right? Mm, sure. So uh, I need to be prepared for that. I need to think before I will start it, right? Okay. So. This is really important, you know, what, what you've just said, so think about starting. And when you get to that process of thinking before the start, what should you remember about? What should you consider? Yeah, I think that it's couple, we have a couple different points to, to consider. Uh, for sure, scalability, uh, performance, uh, capacity. Uh, so those three things. We should know the you know, starting point of our application and what we want to achieve. So we need to predict some things, let's say traffic on the site, let's say, yeah, database capacity, uh, let's say that uh, we want to expand our project uh, 
to do something else later in later stage and based on those informations we are able to properly design it so to not lose possibility to you know uh, extend our application or to you know to 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 get more, got, get more users on board yes, and so on. Yes, yes. So we need to think about all of those things before and later uh, we should monitor what is going on on our site, how we, you know, users' database expand, how they are behave uh, on our page or, yeah. So we need to think about those things to, to, to do it in a proper way. Okay. Is there any, because you've mentioned a couple of, you know, points that, that are important. Is there one of them that you think is more important than the other or it depends on the project scope or, or the industry maybe? It always depends on the project scope, but I think that scalability here is the most crucial. So, yeah, we need to, as I said, we need to, we need to know the, the starting point and uh, what we want to achieve. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you give us, you know, some examples of, of, of architectures? architectures? Yeah, yeah okay. sure. Uh, the most common one is uh, layered architecture. So let's say that we are building our projects, uh, project as a, um, layers. So one above another, right? So we have different layers which uh, should be interconnected, but not interdependent. So, uh, yeah, let's imagine that we have a, like a cake, right? <laughs> Layers of a cake. So yeah, on the cakes are, yeah, I like yeah, cakes, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's a good analogy. <laughs> uh, so on the bottom we have, let's say, database layer, then we have business logic layer, and on the top we have presentation layer, right? So different layers uh, responsible for different things. And uh, it's allow us to, you know, to, to easy test it, each layer separately, we are, you know, keep uh, different responsibilities in different layers and we can change, let's say, database layer, right? So let's imagine, do you know what is MySQL? Yes, MySQL, yeah. Yeah, sure. and Postgres, let's yes, say. Yes. So let's say that we want to change our database from MySQL to Postgres because it's better for us. Mm -hmm. And it's allow us uh, for that because uh, we change only one layer. Right? Okay. The database so, layer. So yeah, the database layer is one, and yes. you just take it off and put another one in. True. Okay. Yes. Uh, and yeah, so it's it's a layered uh, architecture, but we have also uh, let's say microservice architecture. So uh, separate uh, responsibilities closed in separate, to be honest, uh, small applications which are independent on each other. Right. Uh, it's allow us to you know to to deploy. Let's say that we know that we want to grow only one part of the system. It allows us to deploy only that, that one microservice, uh, not the rest of them. So it's better for us because we are, there is no down, downtime in, in some parts, right? So we just improve that, that one thing. Uh, we use that architecture for in projects where we know that one part of the system will be used in heavier than other ones, right? To not overload all other parts, we can do it just in one. Right? Okay, so how does it, how is it different that the layered one from the microservices one? Because it's for me it seems similar. Like you have layer on top of each other, yes. you know, and then you you can replace the layer, and then you have microservices. So you have different boxes. You can replace the box. Sure, so but uh, yeah. So first difference is with deploying this. We improve one thing. We change one thing. There is no need in microservice architecture. There is no need to deploy whole whole application, right? With all dependencies inside there. So uh, we just improve and deploy just one part. Difference in is also with you know time of coding for each of them uh, maintaining. So in my opinion, it's harder to maintain microservices because each of services is a bit in different place and we need to know where exactly it is. Uh, it's, it's uh, in my opinion, a little bit faster to code uh, layered architecture because we have, you know, one uh, code base, I will say like this, and we know where is uh, everything exactly. 
difference can be with uh, performance for this. Let's say that, okay, uh, in layered application, I have, <coughs> I have uh, one part of the system which is pretty heavy. So I need to have good hardware, right? Mm -hmm, so I mm -hmm. need to increase resources of our server instance, whatever. Uh, in in uh, microservice architecture, as I said, all services are kept separately, so we can increase only this, you know, instance this for one that part. particular okay. particular uh, service. So it might be also cheaper to in maintain some, right? in some cases, right? Okay. Uh, any other examples of, of yeah? Let's say we have architecture like microkernel, so we have one. Uh, core system and we are uh, you know add, add features uh, like uh, plugins so you can turn off and turn on each plugin separately a uh, good example of that architecture is uh, any modern internet browser so let's say Chrome right you have a, your main core application but if you want to you are as a user you can add plugins for something like translator uh, I don't know for keeping your password somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, we keep it as a plugins. Okay, so any mm, let's say scenarios or apps in which this type of architecture is is best for or or that can be used? Microkernel. Yes. Uh, yeah, as I said, internet browsers or everything which it's uh, we want to add. As a plugin. So okay, so for example, e commerce platform also? Yeah, it can yeah. be e commerce platform or some CRM, let's say, that, you know, each uh, system as a service, let's say, application. So let's say that I create system as a service and uh, we have, I don't know, one client wants to have this, uh, another client wants to have that, right? So we can create it not as a, you know core functionalities because it will be used for only for one one uh, user mm -hmm. uh, maybe not one right but uh, it you know any system when you want to keep flexibility for all users right uh, so I, like I as a user I can choose whatever I want yes. this or not and then my version requires this or my business requires this sure. okay. so that's that's pretty straightforward okay you are really experienced and you know you've been working with those technologies for you know many many years yes. i'm a vanilla user i would like to build my new product new application am i even able to determine what i need what i want Is yeah no <laughs> <laughs> uh no uh everything relates on the experience of who will do it right but uh you can use me as a you know uh, part of a team so you know uh, we are here to help our clients to achieve a goal so based on let's say workshops with our clients before project will start uh, we are able to determine what is the best for for this kind of project so we need to know all uh, dependencies so as I said we need to think about scalability performance uh, everything and we are able to predict that before project starts okay that's very important what, what you just said because I've had many many discussions with, with potential clients or clients that would like to have this technology implemented and why? Because, I don't know, their brother-in-law is, is working with that technology or is doing that or they've had this that used in a, in a different project and so on and so forth. So, therefore, they are orientated yes, to using a particular Good that form. you said that different project. So, you know, it, it, of course, uh, we can do it, but what, what's later? Uh, we'll change it because there will be no possibility to you know increase i don't know uh increase uh, number of users or something so yeah based on research phase which we can do with our clients we are able to do it okay, okay. Uh, besides uh, the traffic of users besides the the increase uh, on a database end what in your opinion should be also taken into account when advising on on on, on the proper choice yeah, we need to we need to know clients' needs, right? Business probably. Yeah, business. 
we need to know their business from you know very beginning and from uh, from from below from fundamentals, right? So uh, besides scalability, uh, scalability uh, performance, uh, we need to know what they want to achieve because sometimes they want to be on this level and nothing more, right? Okay, we will think about this later, but right now we are focused on that and we want to achieve this goal uh, if it will earn uh, some, man some money, we can think about something else, right? So yeah, it also depends on, on their needs, but we need to remember that if someone will tell us, okay, we will do it in this way, why? And there is no really arguments to, 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 to do it. Uh, we, our, our work is to convince their, them to use proper architecture. Okay, that, that's also, I think, really important because, uh, you know, of course, everyone dreams of having millions of users, yes. but that rarely happens, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, with, uh, with projects. Maybe it happens often, but not to everyone that, that mm -hmm. builds a, a digital product. Mm, are there any no-goes? So absolutely, you know, things that you would say, uh, types of architecture that you can avoid or, or if you are a so. certain size? No, I don't think so. Uh, we need to know what should be done and we will do it in the best way. The best way we will choose the, the architecture will, will perfectly fit in that kind of project. Okay. And do you think that uh, someone, let's say that someone makes a bad choice? Yes. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm you know, starting my own business and I have a couple of million of dollars and I'm, yeah, <laughs> and, I'm, <laughs> and I'm, you know, building a digital product, let's say a chatbot, new chatbot yeah. solution, uh, you know, f and I dream about having millions of users and I pick a part of technology and architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, what if someone makes such a choice? Is, is there any way out? How do you get out, you know? There is a way out if it's <coughs> a bad choice, right? After some time, um, including our monitoring, based on that, we can, we can say that, okay, it was bad choice. Uh, we should do something with that if we want to uh, involve our business. Uh, but it's possible, of course, based on, you know, one architecture, we are able to uh, refactor it, so do it in an incremental way. Let's say that uh, we have, I don't know, layered application and then uh, one part is really heavy, right? Uh, it needs a lot of resources. We are paying a lot of money for uh, our instance where we keep our, our project. And let's say we are able to move it as a separate service. So it's not a microservice architecture, but we are able to uh, to take layer to take, yeah, and to build a microservice. Not whole layer, but this okay. part which we need, right? So uh, let's say not whole layer, but uh, some part of the system which which should be uh, in a different you know place. So we are able to do it. So we can start to refactor or layer the application to microservice, and it happens all the time. Uh, the same with uh, to to other sides. So let's say that we have microservice architecture, uh, or uh, and we can see that okay, it works, uh, but uh, we are not able to maintain it because it's spread out all all over the world, right? So we want to keep it in one place to 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 for better maintaining and everything. And it's also possible. I met a lot of projects which uh, which were uh, done in this way, and someone decide that okay so we'll do it in, uh, in a different way in a different way later and uh, even even w if we are talking about this uh, sometimes we are doing in in purpose because it's faster so let's say that i have idea and i have no idea if if uh, this 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 project will be okay, okay. for yeah. clients i want to check it so proof of concept right uh, some mvp uh, let's say and uh, we can do it in this way okay it it works uh, based on monitoring we are able to say what is going on there and we can do it in in different way uh, we have money for that but later and uh, it's possible to change it okay. is there any uh, or have you ever encountered the situation in which uh, the choice of architecture resulted in a disaster 
or huge problems for a project? Uh, yes, I met not my project, of course, but <laughs> <laughs> sure, of course. but I met projects where uh, architecture was over complicated for that kind of project. And based on that, uh, after a couple months, there were there was no budget to to you know to continue to that project <laughs> because a lot of people worked in a different way, and uh, you know the, the, there was a chaos uh, uh, in in architecture, to be honest, and that is why you know, it failed. Why do you think that happens? Is it because developers like to experiment? Yes, yes. that's true. Try to experiment. I uh, had no experience in that kind of architecture. You know, something like you know, blind work through uh, through new architecture, and uh, yeah, it failed because of that. Okay, so that's 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 very helpful. Uh, yeah, we've talked about architecture. I have another topic that I would like to bring up with you because I, I know that you have a significant experience with it. So the topic is Elasticsearch. Yeah, yeah. I know that you've been working with Elasticsearch a lot uh, in your past. Tell us about it. You know, what what's Elasticsearch? Where where do you use it? Why do you use it? Why okay, is it Elastic useful? Elasticsearch is uh, basically a search engine, which we can use to uh, to search our data, right? So we can have a lot of data. We can keep it there uh, in in Elasticsearch as a document and uh, we'll get results in you know milliseconds seconds i remember a situation where when we decrease time of search for page based on my school database uh, versus elastic elastic search from 22 seconds to 0.7 seconds so 700 milliseconds so okay. it's huge uh, huge difference yes uh, and yeah it's it's uh, it's a, you know it's just a service just a tool for us to 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 increase uh speed of, of taking data you, you've it. mentioned that with you've uh, able you were able to improve the the efficiency from mysql to uh, to search yeah. 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 The, the searching time uh, elastic search works with every database uh, or with you know it there is no uh direct connection between Okay. Those things we need to have something which will take data from our database and put it in Elasticsearch. I'm calling this synchronization between them, right? Okay. So we have data in database. We can modify it in a fly, let's say, and put it in in Elasticsearch. You know, structurize the data and put it in the proper way in Elasticsearch. Based on that, if we have a lot of conditions uh, which we need to consider during search, Elasticsearch would, will work, you know, better. Okay, so uh, when it comes to huge chunks of data, this is a good solution to 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 find what we need in a in a in a relatively short time span. True. Sure. Okay. Uh, are there any particular you know, uh, let's say, projects or businesses that you think might benefit from that? From Elasticsearch. From Elasticsearch. Yeah, all all projects we which work on huge portion of data, uh, even. You know, based on on data in Elasticsearch, we can uh, create nice charts. So everything uh, which uh, should be presented in, in a nice way. So let's say nice charts or you know uh, statistics uh, based on those data. You know, Elasticsearch allow you not only for searching, but you can create some custom scripts and put there to to get uh, data uh, in a way you want to. Uh, there is possibility to aggregate data to, to you know count averages everything so uh, everything what is related with data can know, benefit it benefit for that okay yes. do you think that changing the, the, the topic a, a little bit do you think that uh, you know the the backend development per se uh, in general uh, is under assault or is threatened uh, in, in the future? I mean, do you think that it's possible to have a, a, a service, a platform in which you can point and click and have a certain result that will basically replace your work? I don't think so. Someone need to code it, so... <laughs> <laughs> At some point in time. Yeah, yeah but I mean. uh, from, you know, uh, last years, a lot of... Uh, we can see a lot of tools which... Uh, convert 
front end work to you know to, to working websites right but if you want to do something custom uh, you have something in the back of your head and you want to create a, a nice project but you know that I don't know com uh, calculations are really complicated or something I don't think so that there is so advanced AI which will uh, you know do it and replace and the replacement yeah okay and do you think that uh, maybe you, you you have some advices for people that would like to transit from a different technology to back-end? Uh, for, um, for example, I'm a front-end developer, I would like to become a back-end developer, or a mobile and I would like to switch, or I don't know, even a quality assurance engineer. Uh, is there anything that you, know, that you should start with? Is there anything that you should remember about? Any, any tips? Not tips, we need to remember that coding is coding, right? If we are doing it on the front end, on the back end, uh, it, we can see similarity between them, right? It's coding, so logical thinking is crucial here. Uh, but uh, yeah, if we want to convert myself from, uh, ch change my profession from front end to back end, uh, I think that it's better to become more like full stack, full stack developer rather than changing uh, everything what I did previously, right? Uh, no tips. Okay, but it, it, I assume that being full stack, so your knowledge of front end also helps you understand a lot of things. Within yes, the on the front end side, yeah, and inside one team, let's say that in, in my team I, I'm responsible mostly for back end, but sometimes I need to code in, in mm -hmm. the front end side, and uh, you know communication between those specialties of so front and back end should be really good. And me, as a, as a backend developer, it's good to know that uh, something can happen on the front-end side if, if I will do it in a different way. Okay, so you understand uh, the other side of the yes. table and the, and the perspective of others. Yeah. How about communication with, uh, with mobile? Is this similar or yeah, the same? Similar, okay. similar like, like with front-end. So uh, I can know what is going on on a mobile and how it should be done on uh, my side to make their life easier <laughs> to yeah. not you know make some conversions or something on the mobile side because you know uh, mobile uh, applications use mobile resources right resources of your phone and uh, it's sometimes it's better to do some custom things on the backend side because uh, mobile will just you know uh, present it on the screen, right? Rather so than to hit your phone. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so this uh, also requires some attention to, to work toward the best efficiency. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. So we've covered architecture. We've covered some of your experiences. Uh, do you have any uh, final remarks or, or something that you'd like to share? Yeah, work smart, not hard, right? So <laughs> uh, I think that Abraham Lincoln said that uh, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four to uh, sharp my axe, right? So we need to know, we need to know how to approach each project separately. There is no, you know, each project is different. So we need to remember that, it, you know, my project is similar to that. Okay, it's similar, but it's not the same. We can approach it in a different way to, to achieve uh, better results, right? Okay. Cool. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. It was a very uh, pleasant conversation. Uh, guys, if you would like uh, us to share anything else, uh, drop us a comment you know, uh, down below this video. Uh, hit subscribe to uh, support our efforts in you know, creating th those videos for you. Uh, we are waiting for your feedback as always. And yeah, see you soon in another episode of Score Couch. Thanks. Thanks.